Prime Minister of the Republic of Fiji to deliver an opening statement. Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr. President. Your Excellency is the President of the General Assembly and uh, UN Secretary General, my fellow heads of uh, state and government, distinguished delegates, Bula Minaka, and a very good morning to you all. Your Excellencies, it is an honor for Fiji to join Ireland in uh, co-facilitating this mid-term review of the implementation of the Samoa pathway. The, <coughs> excuse me, the recent devastation caused by Hurricane Dorian has reaffirmed the importance of this meeting as one of the most consequential small island developing states gatherings in decades. Secretary General, I know you share your uh, share our disappointment that your call for greater ambition in climate plans has gone unanswered by so many countries. But in the Pacific, sir, we will always be grateful for your visit in May, where you listened to our concerns and committed yourself to dealing personally with the existential threat that we face. Your Ex Excellency's continuing vulnerability remains a central challenge for small states, including to the vagaries of global conditions beyond our control and contradictions in the world's larger economies. These challenges, <coughs> excuse me, these challenges demand we continue to make our economies more efficient, guided by the hallmarks of good governance, transparency, accountability, and zero tolerance for corruption. In doing so, we sustain the confidence of our development partners, the multilateral development banks. We look to for infrastructure development and the domestic and foreign investors who keep our job markets and export revenues healthy. But our progress will mean nothing if we do not address the climate crisis. That effort requires we strike a balance between building resilience and debt sustainability. We need to expand the available uh, pool of finance and draw significantly more from the private sector. To do that, we need to understand what private capital markets need in order to invest for attract, uh, attractive returns in developing countries. Fiji has already listed the first sovereign green bond by an emerging market, and we are planning for a blue bond and a shipping bond. And we've worked with the Green Climate Fund to leverage uh, Asian Development Bank support for a large climate uh, resilient water infrastructure project in our capital, Suva. But Your Excellency, the fundamental problem is that these initiatives are not enough. And we need developed country governments to rethink the way they provide assistance to developing countries to include the provision of loan or risk guarantees as a means of encouraging private sector investment. We need more blended finance, concessional finance and even zero interest loans or loans that are linked to meeting the sustainable development criteria must all be on the table, as well as broadening debt for nature swaps to include debt for sustainable development or debt for climate swaps. Importantly, institutions such as the World Bank and Asian Development Bank should place the implementation of the SDGs over immediate investment returns. Most of all, we need to move away from casting countries solely as middle income and least developed and provide sustainable finance on the most favorable terms on the basis of vulnerability. A cyclone Winston in Fiji and Hurricane Doran in the Bahamas have made clear the devastation of climatic disasters demands access to direct financial assistance to enable rebuilding efforts that strengthen climate res resilience and which are financed by an, an innovative blend of private and public sector capital. This week, Your Excellencies, from the campaign for climate action to universal health co uh, coverage to development finance, the strength of small states' voices and commitments have bellied the size of our nations. And if there's one place the UN system can undoubtedly make a difference, it's in helping fund small states to carry out work we know and we are proving can be done. I thank our respective teams for their efforts and for assisting the UN to reach a consensus on the declaration leading to this summit. I also thank the President of UNGA for his focus on small island developing states 
and then the Secretary General for his passion and energy, highlighting the challenge of the challenges of the small island developed states, especially in relation to climate change. Thank you, Your Excellencies. Aloha, Your Excellencies, distinguished, de distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Today I stand before you as a singular representative of all island nations. I am honored to represent those who continue to fight as stewards of this planet. As a native Hawaiian, born to a mother from Iowa, I have seen how one place can be oblivious to another. The issues facing an island can feel so far removed from that place that is landlocked in the middle of our country. However, with a foothold in two worlds, I quickly began to see how a problem for one will soon become a problem for all. As a human family, through innovation and creativity, we have elevated ourselves and perceivably stand as the most powerful beings on Earth. Yet our ego, our fear, and our relentless drive for profits have made us the only species willing to force disharmony with the natural balance of our world. We are the living consequence of forgotten traditions. We suffer a collective amnesia of a truth that was once understood, the truth that to cause irreversible damage to the earth is to bring the same unto ourselves. We, the island nations, and all coastal communities are the front lines in this environmental crisis. The oceans are in a state of emergency. Entire marine ecosystems are vanishing with the warming of the seas. And as the waste of the world empties into our waters, we face the devastating crisis of plastic pollution. We are a disease that is infecting our planet. From the atmosphere to the abyssal zone, we are polluted. It is a known fact that the great garbage patch floating in the Pacific is larger, larger than the country of France. Even at the depths of the Mariana Trench, we are discovering nanoplastics. And shockingly, there are more plastic particles in the ocean than the stars in the Milky Way. It is shameful. Yet the greatest threat to small island developing states is the fact that entire islands are drowning into the sea due to the enormous volume of emissions generated by the first world countries. Island nations contribute the least to this disaster, but are made to suffer the weight of these consequences. Our governments and corporate entities have known for decades the immediate changes needed. Yet change still has not come. And when the front line is gone, we are doomed. There is no undoing. If you continue to watch unsympathetic to the issues of island nations, this realization will soon come that you stood by and witnessed the world cross the critical tipping point ushering the death of our planet. 69 of the 100 richest entities in the world are corporations. They are not governments. Obviously, it is not naive to believe that one does not influence the other. But we are watching, and the people will hold our governments and corporate pro powers accountable for the destruction you are allowing to our environment. Three years ago in Paris, the world stood united and vowed to keep the Earth below 1.5 degrees of warming. We pledge to hold ourselves to a higher standard and to do what is right. I'm standing here today because I am ashamed that not all of our leaders have honored this agreement. Delegates, I ask you now, do we still stand in unity for this cause? Do you intend to honor the commitments for betterment, betterment of mankind? Or will you continue to chase short-term profits above our children's basic human rights to live on this earth. Change cannot come in 2050 or 2030 or even 2025. The change must come today. We can no longer afford the luxury of half-assing it as we willingly force ourselves beyond the threshold of no return. As a human species, we need the earth to, to survive. But make, make no mistake, the earth doesn't need us. We are demanding global unity for a global crisis 
to once again bring harmony between mankind and the natural balance of our world. We must right the wrongs we have done against our children and grandchildren because we are gifting them with a world that suffers from our irresponsible stewardship. I leave you with an island proverb that states, Heva'a Hemoku. Hemoku Heva'a. These words teach us that all land, no matter how big or small, floats on the ocean like a canoe in the middle of the sea. And that our planet is nothing more than an island floating amongst an ocean of stars. Life on a floating vessel has limited resources. It requires strict conservation practices and carefully planned navigation to ensure survival. We must work together as a global community to best steer our canoe in the right direction, the direction of a healthy and abundant future on Earth that we call home. Mahalo nui loa. Please join us, the Samoa Pathway, and unified commitment to protect and heal the planet. This is for all of us. Aloha. Kuki ai maura. Whether changes that would destroy their homes would destroy their ways of life. It's a new lens on what is failing. We are struggling and rest. To realize as well in many cases that then they are protecting what they know in the hearts and to live in peace and security. I think, therefore, in many cases, those 